All right, everybody, if you are on the screen, please, or on the Zoom, please turn your cameras on, put your mics on silent. We're going to get started here shortly, just one second. Uh, all right, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Love the energy. Today's going to be a fantastic meeting. We got a, a local celebrity in the house. He's actually getting his coffee right now, so we'll let him, let him do that. But before we get started, what there's a lot of changes happening in the real estate industry. Can we agree right now? Yeah. It's a changing market, fluctu fluctuating market. So tell me something good. What are some wins that you've had in the last couple of days? I will call on people if you don't volunteer. So I know there's good stuff. So Valerie's actually telling me just calling Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, what's to tell me something good? Uh, I signed my first listing agreement. Boom. <laughs> How did you get that listing agreement? Uh, sphere of influence. Sphere of influence. There you go. Working his sphere. Awesome. All right. Let's get one more. Anybody online? You're welcome. Anybody online have something they want to share? Yeah. Anybody in the room? You, what'd you do? Close to? Boom. Where'd those deals come from? Sphere. Sphere. There you go. Working the sphere. Classic sphere. It works. Work what works. All right. So we do have a couple. Oh, we have somebody on the chat box. Louise has two pre-approved buyers after what felt like a two-month buyer dry spell. Boom. And a potential new motivated seller needs to close in three weeks. Let me know the address, Louise. Put it in the chat box so we can share it. Um, all right. Well, congratulations. Let's give him a round of applause, everybody. Round of applause for Louise. Let me share my screen really quick. We do have some awesome events coming up soon. Uh, John, I, got, I just listed yesterday a 1.15 million dollar place. Oh. And the next door neighbors just sold two weeks ago for 1.2 model match. Really? We priced and hopefully get driven up. Boom. And it, I, I've, I've heard this house is nice. It has a pool. It's got a, pool. It's got a patio. Really nice. Yeah. Five million dollar backyard is what I've heard it quoted <laughs> at in the past. Two million dollar backyard. Two million? Two million dollar backyard? Originally, it only cost 250,000, but Yes, yes. So, anyways, reach out to reach out to Drew if you wanna if you wanna own Brent's house. So, <laughs> spoiler alert. All right. Um, but next Thursday we will not be meeting here. Next Thursday we will be meeting at the Granite Bay Country Club. It's from ten to two, so it's going to be a little bit longer of a meeting. But we're going to be learning from Michael Lafito, um, a luxury listing specialist, I believe, out of Chicago. This event is free, so make sure you get your tickets. Make sure you show up early because parking is always fun at the Granite Bay Country Club. Any questions on that event? All right. And then also on the 28th, we have um, the, the Mac Daddy of all professional mixers happening at the mix, right? So there's going to be hundreds of people there, um, lenders, vendors, um, real estate agents, business owners. There's a person that sold a Frenchie at one of these events for $10,000, right? So there's going to be people of all kind. I get legit, oh, the deposit? The deposit was 10 grand? Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. Anyways, maybe we're in the wrong industry. Maybe we should be selling dogs. Anyways, that's coming up on the 20th, so mark your calendars. Is there going to be pina coladas there? Pina coladas. I will see a lot of pineapples. <laughs> there is, there is first pina colada on me, Manu. If you show up, if you show up. All right. Well, with that, what is happening, Alicia, in the wonderful world of lending? Yay! So, um, in honor of Tom's talk today, I just want to remind everybody: we do do the HUD lending program. Um, we're going to be doing a HUD one hundred dollar down foreclosure product, uh, as, as well as good neighbors next door, and which is for first responders. So as these foreclosures start hitting, please think of me because we can't under pre underwrite those files and get them pre approved ahead of time so that you have them floated. Um, but I do want to just remind you guys of a phenomenal tool to use to excite people is a daily rate lock advisory. Just Google it. Why do I love this? One, first of all, don't be surprised that like 50 mortgage companies pop up and I'm literally sending you to another mortgage company website. I used to pay for this till I Googled it one day. So use it for free. But basically that site tells you what's happening in the mortgage market this week, what's predicted to happen, what happened today. You can always find something positive to talk about. So for example, Today it says, uh, well, first of all, rates went up last week, but then they went down Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, you know, and they go down 
If it goes up 0.75, but then it goes down an eighth, an eighth, an eighth, an eighth, an eighth, it might take a while to get back to where it was when it started. But the, the point of this is when this advisory tells you this morning it went down an eighth, what a phenomenal way to call people. Hey, yep. I'm super excited. Yep. Rates got better today by an eighth. So today when you go there, it says rates got worse today by an eighth. So that's not what I would use. Instead, I would use the fact that it tells you rates are predicted to get better in the next seven days. That's what I use that day. Hey, I'm super excited. The rate of advisory says rates should be getting better within the next seven days. We really should get you pre-qualified. So again, your guns are loaded, ready to pull the trigger and write the offer. We want to be able to lock you in when rates dip down. Right now, they're predicted to dip down within the next week or so. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I use the rate loss advisory on the daily to excite the buyers and give them something to be hopeful about. Um, because all they're hearing in the news is how they're up and how everything's negative and how everything's bad. So if you're that shining light of great news, guys, rates are supposed to get better in the next seven days, right? So I just wanted to give you guys that tool, make sure you are using it. And it also helps you feel knowledgeable about what's going on. Hey, I heard the feds are going to meet this Friday, right? So, so it's a really helpful tool to use. So real quick, they just Google rate lock advisory. Yep, rate lock advisory, and it's a super awesome. I've been using it for like 15 years, and it's pretty on point. People might go, hey, it wasn't accurate. Well, it basically tells you here's what's supposed to happen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those reports come out and are different than the predictions, but they can only go off of what the economists are predicting. Correct. So a prediction is just that. The reality yeah. might come out and be different. But rates typically change, guys, 9, 11, and 1 o'clock. Sometimes it's important for you to teach the borrowers that because they might go, rates are doing this. And I go, just so you know, they change three times a day. They're not doing anything for very long. And they typically go like this throughout the day. And when they change, when it says rates change by eight, that's just the cost, not the actual rate itself. You would take the 0.125% times the loan amount. And that's the actual change that took place that day. So it might only be 400 bucks. So then I say to the client, oh, I know rates went up this morning, but in your case, it's 400 bucks. Oh, well, that's not a big deal. I know. Don't pay attention to everything you read. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it just helps you sound like you're more knowledgeable than the news or the market. Does that make sense? 100%. So I, I use it every single day. It's pretty amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you for that, Alicia. And then if they want to reach out to you, how do they get a hold of you? 916-256-6486. 916-256-8. Six, four, can you just put that in the chat box for me? 6486. Six. I'm Listexic, okay? So. Daily rate loss advisor. Daily rate loss advisor. You just have to Google. It's not a website. It's you just Google daily rate loss advisory and 35 banks will pop up. They all pay seven hundred a year for it, so I get to steal from the website for free. For free. For free. Yeah. All right, then up on the screen, I forgot to. All the same information. I did forget to bring uh, or to mention, or I was waiting rather. There's an event, another event coming up. It's the annual paddle with your humble hustlers. Cindy Darcy, you want to explain what this is? Yeah. Um. So this is something we started last year. It is we started. And it's for everybody. It's for our clients. It's for us. It's for everyone associated with the industry. And we pick a spot usually a day before at Folsom and we do a barbecue and um, people bring their paddle boards and their kayaks and we just all go out together. Um, our last event that we had last year, we had over, what, 100 paddle boarders out there. Wow. It was so fun. I mean, it's just so we just go out there. Um, you know, just the one thing to remember is, you know, on land, it is a considered a dry lake. So when you bring your beverages, make sure they're in water bottles or something that pulls them. Really? Because we don't want you guys being the reason we get broken up. We did have humble hustler bottle, water bottles uh, before, little white claws. Um, and it's really fun. Make sure um, we'll put on the team page, sign up for our event, right? Because we just need to know how many hot dogs and chips to get for everyone. Um, bring your own drinks, invite who you want. Um, it's a good time. So hopefully you guys go make it. Bring your kiddos. Yeah, bring your kids. Clients, you know, co-workers. And what game? 
It's Thursday the 28th at 5 p.m. Generally, we get there about 5 p.m. takes everyone a while to blow up. Most of us have blow up the board, so it takes us a good half an hour. Um, and then we all just start going out there, and everyone's got their music out on their boards, and everyone's just partying out there and meeting people, and it's great. I mean, we had tons of realtors come last year that we never even met before, and now we're super good friends with them. So That's it's awesome. a really, really fun social event, so hopefully you guys go make it. Only question, do you have to wear a bikini to do this? No. <laughs> Boarding, as long as you don't fall off, you can wear your regular clothes. Okay. You fall off, you have problems. I'd have to wear a bathing suit. Yeah. No, if, if you said yes, if, if Jared's wearing a bikini, I'm there, man. That's all I'm saying. So, all right. Well, with that, that is it for today's um uh events and market update. Let's get to the man of the hour, Mr. Tom Daves. Give him a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> to be here and be invited to this meeting today so when john called me up he said hey can you come into our meeting and share a little bit about reos i said absolutely i'd love to um although i to, to be honest with you i haven't done an reo for 10 years so <laughs> i'm a little bit rusty on it but i've got the basics down and uh, we could all jump in and do it i could jump in and do it if you choose to okay so I'll kind of weave it into a story, just a little bit of, about myself. Um, pretty much born and raised here in a local Sacramento area. Uh, married, um, have three kids, anywhere from 14 year old teenager all the way up to a 34 year old. I've got three grandkids, which are great. Kind of wish I could have skipped the kids, skipped the kids, but like <laughs> the grandkids, right? Uh, and, you know, I just love all the outdoors, hiking, biking, golfing all of that fun stuff you might have seen some of my TikTok videos um, of all that but um, i got into real estate um, over 35 years ago and my favorite saying is from wayne gretzky a lot of people get it wrong they say you have to skate to where the puck is but no you've got to skate to where the puck is going to be so whether it was traditional real estate back in the started in 77 believe it or not before most of you were born probably um, traditional real estate through the 80s and then I did the REOs the first go around in the 90s. And then from there, then um, the market uh, corrected and there was a lot of opportunity with flips. I bought and sold hundreds of flips from uh, 2000 to um, 08, um, at which time, you know, the market was going up so fast. I was like, man, I'm so smart. Yes, it's going great. But then all of a sudden I went from, you know, the high school star to the you know to the dunce or whatever <laughs> um, because the market tanked in a hurry um and i actually had 36 of my own personal flips in my own personal portfolio so i had 36 of them the market tanked a lot of you remember what happened then so i needed to do something i had to do something quick okay where's the puck going to be and because I always would collaborate with other top agents throughout the country, which I know all of you do, which we have a great opportunity at EXP to go and learn what's working in different areas and different markets. Um, I was connecting with, um, you know, Mark Spain. I was connected with Justin Harville. I was connecting with all these big dogs and they like, hey, REOs are coming. We're doing it. Boom, this is what has to happen. I literally, I mean, because I had those 36 flips in my own personal inventory, I was selling them, renting them, trying to get rid of them. And it was all private money notes. I mean, I didn't have any uh, institutional financing. There were friends, there were relatives, there were colleagues. Oh, hey, Tom, we trust you. Here's 200 grand. Just pay it when it closes. I mean, like, oh, you got to pay them back, right? So I was, to be honest, I was going through some anxiety. You know, we all, you know, everybody might think, oh, Tom Daves, he's just crushing it, always been great. Well, hey, we go through failures. I know Brent has some stories about where he's failed. I've failed. We've all failed, right? So um, what, I, what I did know is I knew that if I just took action, that I was going to be able to get out of the hole, pay back all that debt, and then um, create energy, create uh, business uh, for myself, my family. So I just got on the phones, you know, I just got on the phones and I would just recommend 
any and all of you, if you're ever, if you don't know what to do, just get on the phone and just start talking to people. There's four keys that determine anyone's success. Number one is mindset. Think big, go big, growth-minded mindset, constantly learning and growing. Um, and then number, Warren Buffett says you're, the best investment that he has ever made is in himself. So we're all growth-minded here. Yet. Number two is how you spend your time. Extremely disciplined, doing the right thing in the right order, and um, spend your time, uh, you know, around lead generating activities. Every single day, um, I have the power list. You might have heard of Andy Frisella. He has the uh, 75 day hard. How many of you guys have heard of that or done 75 day hard, right? So um, he also has the power list, which is five items each day that you're gonna do no matter what, it's gonna move the needle, right? So for me, um, I have five items and I have an accountability partner. Otherwise it's burpees, 40 burpees. Who likes burpees? <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. So for me, the action items are, you know, I'm going to have two new, uh, two new agents that I'm going to reach out to every single day Two usually big dogs, either icons or above or king leaders, but two a day, two new, and then uh, two follow up, two red zone, two people that um, you've been nurturing. You know, that's the biggest mistake that real estate agents make. They don't follow up. You've got to follow up seven to 15 times to get someone to move, whether it's a buyer, a seller, or another agent. Then the third thing I do every single day is I reach out to two agents in my organization. How can I support you? How can I help you um, grow whatever you need to do? And then um, I do one social media uh, post every day, one video every single day. We need to provide content. That's what is going to help provide value for our clients, for other agents. Continue to provide content. YouTube is huge right now. I'm sure you're all, all over that. And then the last is usually kind of a health thing. I'm doing the uh, intermittent fast right now. So it's in between 12 and 7 is my feeding window. Nothing after that or it's burpees, right? So um, back to, to the four things. Number one is mindset. Number two is how you spend your time. Number three is who you spend your time with, right? You're the sum total of the five people you spend most time with. That's probably one of the things that has helped propel my business the most is just by connecting with high level people. I wanted, I used to want, <laughs> I wanted to be the, the smartest guy in the room originally because hey, it makes you feel good. You know, I know more or whatever. I want to be the dumbest guy in the room. I'm sure you've probably heard a lot of this. So you can learn from other people how you can reach your goals. And then the fourth is just take action, take action, just do it, just do it, just do it. A lot of agents, in fact, when I first started back in 77, I was 12. <laughs> when I first started, um, there was another guy about the same age as me, and he was just like getting ready to get ready to get ready. He had, he, you know, we we're all saying, hey, go work a farm, go work a geographic farm. So he had the map, he had the yarn, he had the stick pins, he wanted to know the, the owner's names, the dog's name and all that. Um, or I just, you know, my broker said, go out and knock on some doors. So um, I was more successful. So just take action, right? And even like today after this, I'm gonna just spill my gut and just share everything I know, everything I can. Take one thing and take action. When you walk out of this room, take action with something. Even if you're not sure if it's gonna work or not, take action. So those are the four things. Mindset, number two is how you spend your time. Number three, who you spend your time with. And then the last one is take action. So, you know, through my real estate career, when I was traveling and I met with, you know, Mark Spain, I met with Chris Waters, met with all of these big agents. They said, REOs, that's where it's at. And because I knew, you know, pretty much anything and everything about a foreclosure, I mean, it was just, a, it was a given. It was a natural thing for me to get right into that. And so I'd love to share, if it's something that's not natural for you, and if you're not really sure if you should do it or you could do it, could 
chew it, do it. <laughs> um, then maybe don't do it. Do something that meets within your wheelhouse, okay? Um, so REOs, I, I knew the foreclosure process, and I'm sure you all know what the foreclosure process is, but if you don't, real quick, basically, you know, if once the seller quits making their payments, then the bank will then, I mean, they have the right to, to send out a notice of default and NOD that very next day. Most of them don't. They will usually wait 90 days to email out that NOD. Back in 2008, man, on the 89th day, they were just ready. Clark remembers that they were just ready to send out that notice of default. Okay, boom. They would send it out because there were no restrictions, no uh, problems with these banks. They were just like, hey, you know, let's just take away, let's just foreclose quickly. The concern now is the banks are really giving a lot of time. If anyone is trying to get a loan modification, if anyone is get you know moratorium, if anyone says anything like the pandemic or COVID or whatever, like, oh, okay, we'll give you more time. So they're prolonging, or if they say, we're gonna call channel three, oh, sorry. <laughs> right? So they prolong the foreclosure. So, but they have the right after 90 days to file that notice of default, okay? So um, once they filed that, then how much time does the seller have, or uh, how long until they will file that notice of trustee sale? After they file the NOD, how long until they can legally fire the, file that notice of trustee sale? 90, 90 days. 90 days, right? So then back then on that 90 day, 90th day, sometimes probably the 89th because there wasn't all that much compliance back then. <laughs> They would file that notice of trustee sale, and then how long um, until they can technically foreclose after they file that notice of trustee sale? How many days? 21. 21, right? So then on that 21 days, they would go ahead and have a trustee sale, um, and they would sell that property. They would put out the notice that it was going to be at the courthouse steps. Everything used to be always down at, you know, Sacramento uh, Courthouse now. You know, there's multiple locations and um, I, I would go down and that's how I would buy some of my properties. You'd have to have cashier's checks and you really had to know your game in order to do it because there's a lot of sharks down there that are going to, they don't care if you're just bidding on a second because, you know, the bid amount is 29000 You're like, oh, wow, $400,000 house for $29,000. i am going to get it. You bid the twenty nine, they sell it to you. You didn't know that it was encumbered by a senior note and you ended up buying it for way too much. So um, that's kind of the, the aria, that's kind of the, um, the foreclosure process. Okay. And I'm sure you know kind of how all of that works. So then from, th from there, actually just prior to that, um, sellers can do a short sale. Okay. And I'm sure you're familiar with short sales. That's just basically when the seller owes more usually than the property is worth, then a lot of the banks are willing to negotiate. We're not seeing that too much because we've had such a rapid acceleration with appreciation. And that's another thing. That's why we're not seeing that many REOs right now. I mean, the REO king in our market, Warren Adams, he's closed 15 deals this year, you know? Um, and, you know, a lot of the other agents, you know, they're doing REOs. They're really not that many of them right now. Um, they're, I don't really forecast that there's going to be um, a ton of them coming up. So that's why I, you know, that's why I'm doing other things. Agent attraction, build my team, all that. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, so once they foreclose, then if someone buys that property, it's at the courthouse steps, then it's theirs. So we would basically, once we would get it, we would go over to the property. A lot of times there was a tenant in there, sometimes not, because you usually couldn't get inside. So you go over, knock on the door, negotiate a cash for keys with the, with the tenant. You know, you'll give them two, three or four grand to have them move out, give you possession. Um, if it was vacant, then of course, to start the repairs and the rehab. Um, 
if you didn't buy it at the courthouse or if no one bid on that property at the courthouse, then it goes back to the bank. That's when it becomes an REO. So who knows where the acronym REO came from and what it stands for? Real estate owned. Real estate owned, yeah. So back in the day, that was a department that each bank had was a real estate owned department. And it was kind of like a dunce hat when someone couldn't make it in lending or in loan origination or in management to go, hey, you know, go over into the REO department, the REO department and you know, liquidate our assets, right? <laughs> so, um, so then when I, um, when I was going through my anxiety because I had, you know, 36 properties, I basically just took action. I got on the phone and I just started calling banks. And anytime that you're going through any anxiety, again, just take action, pick up the phone and just talk to people. I mean, I've never ever had a problem with picking up the phone, talking to people, and you're gonna create action. Things are gonna happen. So um, I just, I would call it, I would find out who the asset managers with from, you know, Mark, Spain, from Lisa Blake, these other agents and brokers throughout the country. Hey, who's the go-to guy? Who do I talk to? You know, what's going on? And so, for example, I would just call up Fannie Mae, talk to the asset manager for Sacramento market. Freddie Mac, same thing. Hey, I'm going to be in Dallas next week. Is there any way that I can stop by, introduce myself? I'm a broker, REO broker, Sacramento, and I'd love to chat with you. Another thing I would do is I would find a couple of their assets, find a couple of properties. I would drive by them. I would take photos. I would do a BPO, a broker price submit opinion, just provide value. So they said, yeah, well, if you're going to be in town, well, I am now, right? So <laughs> I just hopped on the plane with Dallas and never forget uh, when I met with Freddie Mac, they said, well, good timing. We're looking for a, another broker in Sacramento. How many properties can you handle? How many do you have? They're like 56. We need to place 56 properties for the book in the next in the next week. I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. You know, we can do this. <laughs> wow. I was hiring staff, buying computers, and just you know, running with my with my hair on fire like Brent, right? <laughs> so um, there there are, are multiple ways that you can um, go after REOs. I mean, one way is like I did connect with other agents and other markets that are doing REOs, find out who the go-to guy is at each bank. Um, you can also go to REO Mac. There's a meeting like twice a year. You can go to the REO Mac meetings um, nationwide. Um, there's also BPOs. They're always looking for someone to do broker price opinions uh, for the banks. Some of them do end up getting listings. Um, some of them, do not, um, but it's a it's a way to provide value for the banks to um, you know to get your foot in the door. So those are three ways off the top of my head that I know that you guys can. Another way is like what I used to do: track the property. Once you see it, goes back to the bank. Go out, take a couple of uh, photos, connect with the asset manager, and see if you can provide provide value. A lot of times credit unions are a lot easier to get into, to get in with. Um, so that was kind of what I did and how I um, started connecting and started getting the REOs and getting the properties. Um, I also, I work pretty much with everyone. GMAC, you know, Fannie, Freddie, Wells, Chase. It was, uh, one mistake I made though is during that time, I completely gave up my database, you know? I just like, hey man, I'm selling four or 500 homes a year. Who knows the word, you know? And I should not have done that. Um, so I, I would never give up your database. You know, that's really the only tangible asset that you're ever gonna have. Real estate market, it's gonna come up and it's gonna go down. Um, and there's always opportunity in every market. And who knows what the, uh, what the five Ds are? You know the five Ds? Divorce. Divorce, diplomas, diapers, debts, and the daily grind, right? Oh. People are always going to buy and sell. 
So once you, you know, get your foot in the door, uh, they'll, it's usually through different portals. Um, and I'm just drawing a blank right now. Who knows what the different portals are? It used to be REO Trans, now it's, um, I don't know. There's I don't a, know. Just Google it. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yeah. So they will um, email you the asset. Everything is online. It's, you know, you never really ever talk to the asset manager anymore. Um, when I first started, it was nice because we had a relationship. And if we needed to put an offer together or communicate about the transaction, you could call them up. But now, now they don't want to talk to you. Just, hey, put it in the portal, put it in the portal. So you'll, you'll get the asset assigned to you. The first thing that you'll need to do, they'll say, determine occupancy. So you need to go out to that property or have a field rep go out to that property, knock on the door, determine occupancy He's to find out if it's the owner, if it's the tenant, or if it's vacant. So once you've done that, um, then you need to take some photo. If it's vacant, then you'll need to get it rekeyed. Um, and then you'll need to start your, um, you know, start your photos. I mean, when I did it the first go around, we literally, you know, we would take photos, print them out, put them on sheets. Yeah, with a beat, and then FedEx it, send it in. Um, but now everything is online in the portal. Um, I've had some, I mean, get me, I mean, I'll tell you what, it's not for the faint at heart because I've had some near death situations. I mean, it's pretty scary sometimes when you're dealing with these people on these, you know, with these homes, they lost their home. They're pissed off at everybody. That one guy over here in Roseville went over there, determined occupancy, wouldn't answer, wouldn't answer. So I had to get the sheriff, you know, had to go through the entire, um, or the entire um, uh, eviction, eviction yeah. process, right? And then, um, so fine, which now is another thing that takes a long time. Oh my gosh. Um, so you have to go there with your locksmith, with the sheriff, and then yourself. So we were at a property and so, okay, go ahead. I, I think he's in there. So the sheriff's like, okay, well, let's just be careful. So the locksmith was down like this, picking the lock, and the sheriff was behind him. I was behind him. And all of a sudden, the locksmith opens the door, and this guy's standing there with a 357. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and so the sheriff went up there. And um, and, uh, and it ended up, uh, he ended up, you know, calling the Roseville police, had called SWAT team, helicopters, all of this stuff. And I was like, with Fannie Mae, I was like, you know, taking photos, you know, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and they ended up that night at about 1 a.m., they finally got him out after smoke bombs, grenades, oh, and you name it. He put his head, I mean, I guess I found out how to stay in a property with a smoke pump. Put your head in the toilet. And that's the only place where you can really breathe and get oxygen when there's all this smoke. Oh my We're God. way too much info. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's dangerous. So once we, you know, got that guy out, or once you get the occupancy of the property, then, you know, some banks would fully rehab them. So, you know, negotiate with the contractors, you'd have to get three bids. You'd have to, of course, get, you know, all the utilities, you know, pg and &E, SMUD, you know, you name it, get the utilities, pay those bills yourself, set up all those accounts, and then try and get reimbursed from the bank. You have to make sure you have double copies, you've got, you know, date stamp, you got all of this crazy stuff to get reimbursed. I didn't always get reimbursed, but most of the time I did. Um, and then, of course, if they rehab the property, put it on the market, you need marketing reports, you need updates. And then um, once it you know goes into escrow, of course, it's as is deal. None of the banks do any repairs at all. Um, even if it's lender required. I mean, sometimes they do a lender required, but usually not. Um, never forget um, Jolene Welsh at uh, Wells Fargo. Her favorite thing, because 
you always get a request for pairs. No matter you put it in the comments, you know, as is or whatever, should like what part of and get mad at me. What part of as is don't you understand? <laughs> is it the as or is it the is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just so I'm understand um did you ever actually do the hud hud closures yeah because those ones um only because we offer the hud yeah program where you can put the repairs in that's different than than the bank reo 100 percent different yeah hud yeah hud is different um hud you know you had to be an approved of course hud agent like anyone else um and the asset management company was his name was angel at i forget the name of the company but those are a little bit different a little bit more unique and they do want the one-on-one -on -one. they want you to call them with every offer have you been to the property hey i hear there's a squatter have you been there what's going on um and then but generally speaking the rest of the process is the same they're all as is they're all you know, boarded almost. They're not really. Um, I shouldn't say they're all boarded, but um, they don't touch them. They that is really, really as is. So HUD, yeah, go ahead. Um, but they're as is, but the buyer can finance their repairs. right. So they aren't kind of just passed out. They do get to finance the repairs in the limits. Absolutely. Yeah. So check with Alicia if you have questions about those and the HUDs um and so yeah and then with with the reo process um you know you just have to it's all about communication over communicate i really learned a lot um with the reos because we need to over communicate with our clients um, especially right now with the changing market yeah. we need to over communicate and we need to be honest with them on what the real market is doing um, I always have believed that sellers are six months behind the curve, but buyers are six months ahead of the curve. I mean, especially right now with the changing market. Yeah, we've seen the interest rates go up. Yeah, we definitely see the inventory go way up. Um, and the sellers, I mean, they're six months behind. Well, hey, my neighbor, how many of you have heard your neighbor say, right. well, yeah, my neighbor sold his for 950. I want a million, right? Have you heard that? They're behind the curve. It's up to us to educate them and be honest. I would much rather be honest right now at the kitchen table than tell them what they want to hear. And I, I've done that before, you know, trying to be nice, nice guy, tell them what they want to hear. And then, you know, three, six weeks down the road, you're like, well, you know, we need to have price improvement, right? So the sellers, you know, they're they're behind the buyers are ahead six months i mean oh my gosh the buyers you know they see all the actives the pendings they're ahead of they are on the market right so um we need to just of course be honest whether it's a REO bank whether it's a buyer or a seller mm -hmm. and just really provide the information the facts pull up you know the statistics in the market in their area you know there's um at, at the listing appointment you know i have basically three goals number one create rapport by asking questions you know tell me more about why you're moving where you're moving to um tell me what qualities are you looking for in a real estate agent uh, and then really listen to that one because you want to leave that into your clothes right if they want well, someone communicates we want marketing don't say it right away well, we market oh yeah well, we communicate just wait, chill out, mirror match, of course. So the first is um, create rapport. Number two, value proposition, you know, provide the, and hopefully it's a U, UBP or it's a MOFR. Who knows what a MOFR is? MOFR, okay, it's make offer for instant response, M-F-I-R. Make an offer for instant response. Um, because after I got out of the REOs, I, didn't have any database, didn't have any clients. What am I gonna do? Because I had relationships across the country. Hey, what are you doing, Mark? What are you doing, Lisa? We're advertising on the radio. We're connected with Barbara Corcoran. So I said, okay, I'm in. So I went all in <laughs> advertising with Barbara Corcoran, KFPK, Christina Madonna, the fish, and started advertising because I wanted a mofer. I wanted to make an offer for immediate response. And the key mofer at that time, 
was guaranteed sale. Hey, I'm Tom Davis. If I don't sell your house, I'll buy it. I'll sit down with you and we'll agree on a price and a deadline. And it's not sold. I'll buy it, right? Woo! People see me all the time over at you know, base side or whatever. Hey, are you the guaranteed sale guy? <laughs> My wife drives her crazy. So anyway, um, so hey, and, uh, yeah, go ahead. How many homes have you ever had to buy off that program? Uh, one home. There you go. Had to buy one. It gets your foot in the door because you've got a mofer and it gets you in front of them. So one on that program is all I had ever had to buy. <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. Tom, uh, what if you don't have the money and you say like a okay. call Brent? <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, so there's, you know, of course, there's EXP offers, right? Express offers. Mm -hmm. There's also um, Invitation Homes, which is Blackstone, um, who I actually, after the REOs went away, I connect with Blackstone Private Equity, sold them 600 homes. Um, they're still buying in this area. They definitely, their buy box is a lot leaner. Um, also, there's the listing advocate, just Google the listing advocate, where they have multiple options. And that's what the sellers really want right now is they want multiple options. They have institutional relationships that they can connect you with for buy and hold, buy and flip, sell and stay, stay and sell, buy a new home while you own your existing home. And then even if you're a buyer, they have non-contingent um, non money that you can borrow, you have to qualify, and then you can actually buy a home non-contingent. So reach out to the listing advocate. They've got a pretty cool little tool. It's called, um, oh geez, I forget the name. Widget, it's a widget called, uh, I'll think of it. I'm sorry. Anyway, you just go and you sit down with the seller and you open up this widget and type in their address and it'll start, um, you know, if they want an instant offer, well, great, you know, my broker requires that before we request any offers, we will need a listing agreement. So here's a listing agreement and it authorizes me to seek offers for you on your on your behalf, right? 6% commission, three and a half to the listing side, two and a half to the selling side. You put in a, the, uh, of course that's negotiable, everything has, but start with that, right? And then you put in the offer and it'll give them the offers, open door, um, plus you get an additional 1% from open door. Uh, offer pad plus you get an additional three percent from offer pad by the way tomorrow on friday at 9 a.m i'm having the director of offer pad going to share 99 30 um on what i call freedom friday every night 99 30 hope some of you have been there but he's going to share um how to work with offer pad on um, you know making some offers so well, that's a long question to short Mm -hmm. Long answer or a short question, but did I, did I cover that? Yeah. Okay. So again, that's, you know, how we need to differentiate ourselves. That's how we need to provide value to share information with our clients. So we just have to share them, share with them the facts and then tell stories. If you're on a listing appointment, share the facts and then tell stories. If they say, well, you know, hey, I want, you know, my neighbor sold it for this and I want to start high and then come down. Yeah, I totally agree with you, man. I, I don't blame you. I'm here to, you know, to help you get us the highest amount. And I had a seller that was in Newcastle, wanted to try that same thing. Unfortunately, took her 90 days, put it on the market and get sold. And she received very, a lot less, especially now with the market starting to shift a little bit. I'm just going to tell you the truth. A lot of agents will tell you what they think you want to hear, but I think what you want to hear is the truth, right? So, and then ask them questions. You know, well, where do you think based on the model match right next door that just sold for 850, you know, yesterday, where, where do you think we should be? So that's kind of my story I'm sticking to it. Any other questions? I'll Did do. you buy that? Sorry. Right. Yeah. Did you buy the house for less price or was there a negotiation? Um, oh, I bought it for uh, 
I bought it for 75 cents on the dollar. I usually buy homes. Um, what I do is if they call me, yeah, do you have a guarantee sale? Do you buy my home? Great. So that I never give them a price over the phone. Their goal is just to get in front of them. And once you meet with them, you look at the house and then you sit down with them. Probably only about 5% of the time they would actually ask for an offer on the home. They're just like, okay, well, let's just let's, If they do, then I would kind of look around and I'd say, to be honest with you, my offer is only 75 to 80 cents on the dollar. And that's really only for people that are in a desperate situation. I don't see any desperation here. Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so that's kind of the open door. Uh, I mean, open door usually offers the highest amount. I actually bought a flip um, a couple of weeks ago. Again, there's opportunity with every market. And it's mindset. So many people in agents are like, ah, oh, the market's changing, the market's this, the market's that. There's opportunity. Every single market, if it's going up, it's going down, there's opportunity. In the MLS today, there's going to be a ton of homes that go active, a ton of homes that go pending, a ton of homes that, go cl that close because of the five Bs, right? So, um, you know, again, just take action and um, serve the clients, help them out. Um, as I was mentioning, um, open doors usually the highest. I bought a flip and um, got a killer deal on that, 285, 285,000, I think, yes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> open door offered me 324. Wow. Um, <clears throat> offer pad was about <clears throat> they were like 265 less than i paid for it um so but i'm just putting on the market i just listed it today after for 249 um i list my flips five percent below the most current active or the pending so if there's an active there that's a comp i go okay five percent below that boom list it so what other questions do you guys have how do you get tom how do you get to the listing advocate it's just yeah it's just listing advocate i mean you can do listing advocate.com so when you were selling the reos what were the commissions on that like were they the usually five percent yeah the commissions were usually five uh hud was actually six six percent okay yeah okay. yeah what makes you think that you won't have a lot of well i mean of course no one has a crystal ball but we just have, of course, the sellers have a lot of equity right now, um, which is different than before. Uh, so they have equity. And then also the banks are a lot slower to foreclose on, on the properties. And according to the economists, yes, the values are going to decelerate. They're not going to go up as fast, which is good. I mean, we can't sustain 20 to 35% appreciation anymore. Um, what the economists are saying is two to three percent appreciation over the next two years. Again, I don't know. Anything can change. You know, we can have a ninja apocalypse or whatever. So I just don't believe that there's going to be that much REO, and it's not worth it for me unless it's volume. If there's a huge volume, then I'm going to be all over it. But I mean, you do need a lot of staff and support in order, you know, to do it in most cases. What do you think? I mean, what do you guys think the market's going to do? You, think, you know, I've heard a lot of stuff. It might, it might tank. So who has some other input on that? I still think we have a housing shortage. So we do. Yeah, so that I think is going to keep pushing us along. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the inventory is low. It's still a seller's market. I mean, I believe right now is the best time to buy. I mean, tell your buyers, they got to take action. Now is the best time to buy. Yes. Oh, I mean, look at there's more inventory more choices sellers are freaking out they're going to give incentives now is the best time to buy to think going down prices they're not going to go up as fast but i don't think they're going down and yes interest rates are a little bit higher um but historically speaking for those of you that are around a minute or two i mean they're <laughs> low we've got all these millennials that um you know that they want the 2.5 and the 3.5 so anyway, I'm kind of running on here. Any other? Yeah, go ahead. Of, of the five Bs, I missed the fourth. Okay. You said divorce, diplomas, diapers. Yeah, so it's divorce, okay. diplomas, diapers, uh, diaper deaths, and then the daily grind. Debt, debt 
Yes. Yeah. People are dying every day. Oh, death. Death. Yeah. 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 Going to see the Lord. Going to see Jesus. Right. And then Dan's got a question. Yeah, yeah, Dan. Sorry, but I just saw a statistic. I was at another team meeting. I saw a statistic. Homes sold are right in line with the last 10 and 20 year average. Inventory is up a little bit comparatively speaking to our most recent market, but homes sold is right in line with 10 and 20 year average for this time. I also think that we're going to start in, in the next six months, we're going to start enjoying going back to new home sales as well, because I think that they're actually going to start giving money again. Yeah. Yeah. They are. Right. Some right. builders are going to say, yeah. yeah. we're starting so, to creep back up from 0% to 1% now we're at 2%. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just recommend doing what works for you. Um, don't get too sidetracked or distracted with REOs. It sounds pretty sexy and cool. Um, <laughs> but right now there's only 25 properties that um, are at, oh, seven of the pending. There's only there's 13 actives. Um, and then year to date, 25 REOs closed. Wow. So stick with what I believe are the, these are the core four. I'll pass these out. Um, number one is database, fear of influence. Your, only is, your business is only as good as your database. It's the only tangible asset that you really have. And I've got some steps. I like things to keep them really simple. One page goals, I can look at it and see it and stay on track, right? So this is called the one, four, five. I stole it from Keller Williams. They had the one, three, five. I wanted to up their game and go one, four, five, right? <laughs> so first is database, um, you know, and this is basically, you know, stay in touch, KB Core, have events, you know, social media. Uh, Facebook is your database, really. Facebook and Instagram. Facebook, there's more sellers because the demo is 35 to... 54. Instagram is more buyers, probably know all that stuff. Um, and then open houses, have some huge open houses, make it an event. Brent is the king of open houses, right? You know, and it's what you do before, during, and then after. Uh, open house follow up, uh, geographic farm, and then online and outbound as well. So leave that with you. I know I went a little long here today. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. One team, one dream. Thank you so much, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thanks guys. Yeah. All right. Well, I see Brent on there. Brent, were you wanting to hop on? You're on mute, my friend. Wait a second. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> but um, I don't want to interrupt. So keep going. I'll, I want to just wrap up two, three minutes at the very end. I don't know if you have other speakers or what. No, we're at the end. It's you're, you're on, my friend. Right on, right on. Hey, first of all, great to see all of you there. And I just want to um, challenge everybody. Do not participate in the recession of Channel 3, Channel 10, Channel 13. The news, the news likes to report good news or bad news. And so they will scare the living bejeebies out of you. Now, they're great for your sellers. Tell them to watch it all night long, and then you'll get a price reduction the next morning. So let their sellers watch the news. But you guys need to go just be radical monsters. So on that note, today at uh, 2 o'clock, your time, two o'clock Pacific. I'm going to do a 30 minute training with Jarek Robbins about just kind of uh, busting it open, but it is agent attraction. I know we've been talking real estate, real estate, real estate, and we should, and we are, and we're rocking, but I'm telling you, Jared and I spent 80 minutes on the phone Tuesday and he kind of pulled something out of me. It was like a three-step process that was just kind of magic. And so if you want to be on two to two 30 today, zoom with print live, you'll love it. And uh, great to see everybody there. I miss you all. Love you all. Be back in about a month. I'm out here in uh, Puerto Rico. It's amazing. Ooh, it's like a storm. <laughs> but uh, you go. what, what, John? Yeah. Hey, before you go, we're going to take a quick little video of you and me. Um, just 30 seconds. Brent, thank you so much for everything you've done. I'm glad that I could come to this meeting today and share uh, with Brent, the team. Thank you guys very much. We love you, Brent. <laughs> Go, Tommy. Love you, man. Thanks for coming and making a difference. By the way, 
didn't he do a great job for all of us today? So you guys are amazing. Yeah, we appreciate it. Is that Juan in the front row there? Juan made it up. Good job, Juan. Can you guys hear me? I can't hear nothing all of a sudden. It's like totally <laughs> muted. Must be literally a storm just blew in. Like it just like hit like a tsunami. Like, it, it, like I think it's affecting the internet. Anyways, love you all. We'll see you next Thursday right here. And today at two o'clock, Zoom with Brent.live. If you want to see what Jarek Robbins, Tony Robbins and I got cooked up. 30 minutes of Zoom with Brent.live. And go, go get them, everyone. Talk to you later. By the way, my house is on the market for sale in West Roseville. One a million one hundred fifty thousand. It's gorgeous. It's got the pool. It's got all the bells and whistles. And we spent a lot of money on it. So it'll be a, a fun home to sell. Uh, Drew can tell you about that. Bye okay. for now.